My name is Cooper Keen, and this video is going to be teaching you how you can raise butterflies. So the first thing I want to talk about is the materials you're going to need. You're going to want to get a container to keep your butterflies in. And I like this one specifically because it's cheap, and because you can see through all the sides, and it's very well ventilated. Um, when you first start out, you're only going to want to raise one or two at a time, so this cage is really good for that. Um, any other things you might need would probably just be a pair of scissors and this is certain, this isn't essential but if you want you can get a magnifying glass if you really want to get a good look at them especially when they're really small the next thing we need to talk about is what's called a host plant so every species in butterfly has a host plant and that's the only plant that it will lay its eggs on so there are two species of butterflies that i would recommend you start out with and those are the eastern black swallowtail and the monarch butterfly you can choose either one you want. The Eastern Black Swallowtail, the only thing you're really going to need to get is a parsley or dill plant. That, those are their host plants. For modern butterflies though, you're going to need to get milkweed. Now, in front of me I have milkweed seed pod that seeds. This is what the seed pods look like. You're going to find them all around during fall. And inside, there will be a mixture of these. So, if you want to separate the fluff from the actual seeds, you're going to want to just take a plastic bag like this, put a coin inside of it, and just shake it. And that will help to separate the seeds from all the fluff. Now, the other option would be just go online, I guess. Um, I'm not going to specifically tell you how to plant the milkweed because there's plenty of articles and whatnot online that will explain to you in much more detail than I can of how to do it. What I'm going to be talking about is actually raising the eggs and caterpillars. So the first thing you need to do is, I would suggest checking twice a day for the eggs. Um, usually once during the middle of the day and once at the very end of the day. And the eggs can vary between different species. For example, right here, that is what the egg of the Eastern Black Swallowtail looks like. And that's what the very young caterpillar looks like. And then, like I said, it varies between different species, so just make sure you know what it looks like beforehand. Once you're done with that, you're going to want to take the leaf that the egg is on and just put it inside your container. And wait usually takes about five to seven days for Eastern Black Swallowtails and Monarchs to hatch, so it's kind of convenient, I guess. Um, once they hatch, like I said, they're going to be really small. This is a very up-close picture, but from afar, they are very small. So, it's not a great idea to actually touch them. So in order to move them from a, a dried up leaf to a fresh leaf, I would suggest using a pair of scissors to just cut out the part of the leaf that the caterpillar is on, put it on a fresh leaf, and everything works out from there. After about a week and a half, the caterpillar should be of a decent of a larger size that you can pick it up without having to worry about it. Just be very gentle. That's it. And um, that's pretty much it when it comes to caterpillars. Caterpillars is where most of the work is. And it's only about two weeks for monarchs and black swallowtails. That's how long they stay in their caterpillar stage. The next thing, the next stage in butterfly metamorphosis is the chrysalis stage. So Eventually, once your caterpillar is done being a caterpillar, it's going to do what's called J-hanging, which basically looks like that. It's going to spin the pad of silk, on, probably on the top of your cage, or on a stick, maybe. And then you see that little black dot? That is where it hooks itself onto the silk pad. It's going to hang like that for about maybe a day or so. And then what it's going to do is it's going to start to shed its skin. And the length of that skin is going to reveal chrysalis. So, I would, do, I would strongly advise that you do not touch the caterpillar while it's J-hanging, and you do not touch the chrysalis once it has just been revealed, because the chrysalis needs about two days to completely harden, and then once that happens, then it's all ready to go. Right here I have a chrysalis that is actually already hatched. You can see the weight of the butterfly just kind of... Let's so, sail uh, through. That's very important if cause sometimes your caterpillars won't properly, the caterpillars won't properly attach themselves, so they'll end up falling. That's what happened to these two that I've worn here. So, what you're going to want to do if that happens is just lay down a napkin on the bottom, get a stick, take the chrysalis, place it in like that, and just put the stick near it. That way, if it hatches, when it hatches, it can get onto the stick. That's very important because butterflies need to be able to hang down from something once they hatch, so that way they can fully expand their wings and be able to pump blood into them. And that's very important. So, 
Usually you can tell a butterfly is going to hatch because the chrysalis will become see-through, so you can see the butterfly inside. So yeah, just make sure that they have a place where they can hang upside down and let the blood pump into their wings, because that's very important. Once that happens, they'll stay with you for about half an hour or 45 minutes, just they, they need time to adjust, and then they will fly away. Don't keep the butterfly, let it go. Unless it's very windy or raining, it's best that you just let the butterfly go. Um, otherwise, yeah, that's pretty much it. One other thing that you need to take into mind is, as of recording this, it's early April, so you may be wondering how it is that I have all of this. That's because Eastern Black Swallowtails do this thing called overwintering, where they will stay in the pupil form for all of the winter. And if that happens to you, just take the crystals, take the container that the crystals is in, put it in like an attic or a basement, just someplace where it's cool, so that way you don't have to worry about it hatching in like the middle of summer. Um, one other thing is that if you start to raise more than one species, don't keep more than one species in a container, so don't put a monarch and an Eastern Black Swallowtail in here. Put one in here and the other in here. So yeah, otherwise just don't keep them too close together. That's another thing. Don't put like 10 in here because this can fit maybe five before it becomes too much because you don't want things to become unsanitary. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you for watching. Good luck and have a great day.